Hey, what's up, Facebook? It's three guys. Hi, y'all. Fireplace and, and a table. Fireplace and a table somewhere. And there's this yeah. dog over here sleeping. And there's a partridge <laughs> in a pear tree somewhere. I'm sure. <laughs> Probably hidden in the beard. So yeah. <laughs> keeping track of all the food. Hey, Start man, y'all know it's December. Like, it's December. We're, it, it, it is December. weeks away from Christmas already. Yes. Uh, as much as I would like to say that I'm glad 2020 is coming to an end, it's actually been a pretty good year for us in some yeah. ways, too. So, yeah. goods and bads and yeah. in between. Sort of like the shirt colors we picked out. <laughs> goods and bads in between. It's all that you decide who's good and bad, but all I know is I'm the in between guy. Yep. <laughs> so, speaking of December, yeah, I, I, you know me, I, I like facts and, and mm -hmm. those kind of things. So, I did a little research today, and, and this will uh, come to a more cool. point in, in a little bit. Okay. But so December, we don't always get to points, so this is a plus. Yes. De December is, is a lot of things. Like, you look up, to, you know, some of them are crazy. But a few of my favorites were December is National Tie Month. Like, oh. necktie. Oh, which we're going to fail yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We're not so going to do that. Do well, you ever wear a tie, Dale? Um, I, I own a tie. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm doing a wedding or a funeral. Yes. Then it's yeah, I DJed a wedding yeah. two weeks ago and had to wear a tie, but yeah. whatever. Um, it is also National Car Donation Month. Oh, I could use a car. Yeah, yeah I, I could too. I could too. If you're giving away cars, it you're is gonna, December. I'm, I'm with you. Um, it is also National Pear Month, like pears or fruit. Oh. So, well, that makes sense yeah. with the 12 days of Christmas. Like he just said, partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. What are the fruitcake or something? <laughs> there, you go. there you go. This one I thought was interesting. It is Bingo's Birthday Month, like the game Bingo. And I, Somebody I was, thought to keep that on archive? I guess. I was very curious about that. So the game actually started in Italy in 1530. Then it was adopted by the French in the 1770s, and then wow. it arrived in the U.S. in 1929. Wow. I just run to an old bingo hall. It's and almost like 100 bingo all the time. Yeah. So happy yeah. birthday, bingo. Let's see what happens. <laughs> all right. Um, it is also this week. So we went from the month to the week. This week is National... Pet Suffocation Awareness Week. And I first read that, and I'm like, who is going around <laughs> suffocating their pets? Yeah. Like, that just doesn't make sense. So I looked into it. It's actually being conscious of when you throw things away. Like, like the, the wrappers. Out, and, yeah, okay. yeah, those kind of things. Pets. I was like, oh, okay. Um, and these two, we're just going to kind of glance over these, but it, it caught my attention. Uh, this week is Older Driver Safety Awareness Week. So, you be that as that it may, take that yeah, for what it's worth. This one... <laughs> Similar to this one and other ones like this always like make me scratch my head, but this is National Hand Washing Awareness Week. Lush. Well, like, been like the whole year. Every right? day. This, is, this whole year should be. <laughs> anyway. I wasn't aware of how dirty my hands were until, <laughs> until this week. Um, today is National Package Protection Day. It was actually started by Ring, you know, the doorbell ring? Yeah. yeah. In 2016. As awareness for your Amazon packages or uh, other packages being uh, delivered, yeah. so you're supposed to go out and watch for your packages and tell your neighbor. I don't know. So what does that mean though? Like this day is the day you look, and no other day. I don't I, understand I, that. Right, exactly. Yeah. You think that's every time I get an Amazon package, I'm checking delivery and checking where's it at, and okay, yeah. you throw wrappers on the floor every other day, but in this week with pet yeah. suffocation, yeah. you don't. I, that just was weird to me. <laughs> Um, it's also National Fritter National Fritter Day, like Fritters. little. I, I mean, again, of course, there's food in there. I like food. <laughs> and then it's fitting. My dog is here. You can't see her. She may pop on at some point. But today is National Mutt Day. Oh. No, my dog is not a mutt, but most people have mutts. Oh my! Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> we're all too. mutts. Yeah. So um, again, we're getting to, to the point on this date. Okay, so December second, mm -hmm. right? In 1804, Napoleon was crowned emperor. Napoleon. Really? Okay. In 1970, the EPA was born, the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, in 1972, the Temptations made their final trip to number one Aww. with Papa Was a Rolling Stone. Okay. That was a good song. Uh, this one, I like. It. It's a great movie, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Good Wouldn't recommend it for younger viewers, but probably not older viewers either, but it's a great <laughs> movie. Uh, that premiered today in 1997. Nice. And then in 2001, Enron filed bankruptcy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Enron. Enron. Really? It's so, problems. there are many notable birthdays <laughs> yeah. as well. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, in 1863, Charles Ringling. Ringling Brothers. Ringling Brothers. Brothers. Okay. He was born. 
Um, I don't know who this is, but I know you guys are football guys. Uh, Jim David. He was a defensive back. He won the NFL championship with the Detroit Lions in 53, 52. Well, I was going to say, it had been a long time ago. But yeah, the Detroit Lions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm know. sure my father in law knows I, I didn't know that one, but. Uh, Britney Spears' birthday is on this day, then. It, it, I'm getting there. Yes, oh, okay. you are correct. Um, Versace's birthday is Before today. she was crazy. No, no. The Italian fashion designer in 1946. Yeah, yeah, okay. Britney Spears was born in 1981. I'm actually two days older than Britney Spears, which is kind of weird. Nice. Um, Aaron Rodgers was born in 83. Wow. Oh, Aaron Rodgers. Yankee catcher Gary Sanchez was born in 92. Notice he made sure he said Yankee catcher. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> There's no Red Sox born on this day. No. <laughs> no, not that I saw anyway. He'll no, ignore I mean, that. There could have been. He'll ignore that. <laughs> there could have been. I just I didn't say it. It wasn't notable. Um, and Juice World, the rapper, he was born in 1998. Good to know. Yeah. So I, I don't even know who he is. <laughs> I, I've heard the name, but yeah. and one other very important birthday today, which is why we went through uh, today's yes. date in history. Our uh, buddy Pat, we're not going to sing. Well, Jeremy can sing because I, I can't. But <laughs> well, I'm going to share with Juice World, though. <laughs> <laughs> Juice World. We sang to him last night at Bible study. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yes. So yes, happy birthday. Yes. Thank you. So Thank all you. that, all this day in history, just for you. One, one more, one more year to try to give it all to God. So I'm ready for it. Cool. Come on, 2021. You've actually already, people beat me to it. Uh, my wife said happy birthday. Uh, Miss Vicki Johnson, Jeremy's mom, yeah. said happy birthday. My other mom. And of course, Miss Patty is here with us. So She's always here. We're looking <laughs> at the camera, Miss Patty. We're looking at the camera. Yes. <laughs> the best we can. So, so yeah. What, how's, how's your birthday been? It's been good. Yeah. It's weird. My, you know, my wife worked and my daughter's at school. And my son actually stayed the night at the house. He's 18 for, you know, those of you who don't know. And he comes and goes because that's what 18-year-olds do. Yeah. <laughs> So he stayed over, woke up, said happy birthday, and left. And so, well, the good thing was he didn't ask for any gas money or anything. There you he go. must be doing all right. Happy birthday. Happy yeah, birthday. birthday. Can I have money, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been good. I worked on a sermon, you know, because I'm preaching Sunday. But uh, cool. yeah, it's been a fun day. Just kind of hanging out. I think they're taking me to dinner tonight. So sweet. So, all right. So, uh, we got to do the questions, right? Um, most memorable, good or bad birthday? Mm. That's for all of us, right? Yes. All right, all right, cool. I'd have to go back way back. My brother and I, because we were both born in November. My brother's November 6th. I'm November 16th. So we split a lot of birthdays. Mm -hmm. You know, we went joined birthday parties. We had one year. It was the first weekend. The, our new youth minister was over from college, and he was staying at our house. And we had over 72 kids come through our house that night. Wow. wow. Yeah, so we I broke him in nicely. I <laughs> like sharing a birthday with your brother all the time. Man. We didn't do it all the time, but we did a lot. But as we got older, it just became more fun because we had similar friends. Because we're only right. four years different. Mm. So, hmm. cool. When I was when I turned forty, my wife threw a surprise birthday party for me, and that was really cool. My mom flew in from Kansas, and hi, mom, if you're watching, she <laughs> comes on sometimes. But um, yeah, it was just really neat. She had a lot of different different. Peoples that I hung out, hung out with, like whether it be people that worked for the dealership with me or people from church, the other elders and stuff like that. But it was really, she surprised me. I didn't see it coming and cool. that was really, she, and I guess my daughter knew about it for a couple months and she'd been planning it for months and they didn't tell my son because that, what's that tell you? <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> until like the day of, but he said the prayer for the meal. It was just, it was a meat day. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. But you? I think the one that sticks out the most, <clears throat> I was born at three o'clock in the morning. And I yeah. was an only child until I was 13-ish. Um, so my mom would every year wake me up, you know, 3 o'clock in the yeah. morning, happy birthday, which, you know, she was a single mom, so it was cool. And until I turned 16, I think I was 16, and 3 o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> birthday comes, and I hear people singing in my bedroom. <laughs> and I look, and there was like eight people in my bedroom. Nice. And they had a birthday party for me at 3 o'clock in the morning, which... wow. At 16, you were looking for some sleep, weren't you? Yes, that's it was a rude interesting. Awakening. <laughs> it was, but it's something I'll never forget. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was pretty cool. That was the last time we did the three o'clock in the morning thing. But because <laughs> after that, you don't even go to bed till after three o'clock. Exactly. So yeah. Issues, so. 18 was cool too. Everything was orange, but like everything. 18's a cool birthday because yes. that's like the day yeah. you guys you're like, okay, I'm a person. Like, I'm an yeah. adult that I can yeah. like do what I yeah. want. Oh, mostly. I mean, but yep. Within reason. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't mean you make good decisions, but you make them. So. Yeah. We can we can talk about that some other time. On a not so family show. Yeah, right. On a non G rated. 
Anyway, so yeah, that was all I had today. That's all you got? Yeah, just wanted to celebrate your birthday a little bit. Well, I appreciate make it, Make a special appreciate it. We, we are like family, so it's been fun. What, um, do you guys like in this series we're doing, we are going through the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And, yep. Uh, I picked that, as we've talked about before, because I just thought that, you know, I think the culture, especially the Jewish culture, has gotten stale. They've been looking for God in all the wrong ways. Yeah. And they kind of got down to the do's and don'ts, and, okay, I'm only doing this because God says to, or mm -hmm. I'm not doing this because God said not to. And I think somewhere along the lines, uh, they God, God lost their heart. Or mm -hmm. they, they weren't, you know, their heart wasn't on, you know, being around God. So I guess... This has been fun for me. We decided to do this because I think somewhere in 2020 or before, in the last handful of years, I think our, we've done the same thing. Like our, we started to stray away from God more and more. And I thought, you know, why don't we just get back to the basics? And what it really is at the end of the day is God wants our heart. And um, so just thought it was fun. But ha that being said, is something, can you guys think of a time in, in, in your past, whether it be a birthday or whatever, where God changed your mind about something, where, where you, you had thought this way, and then God changed your mind about a person, a group, a place, your job, uh, who you are, what your mission in life is. Is you ever call a time when God changed your thought, your thought process? Hmm. Mic drop, double, double, double mic drop. <laughs> Don't speak all at once. <laughs> Whether it just be, I I read something in the Bible that I didn't know how to explain it until now, or God revealed a story to you. I'd have to say, you know, several years back, I hit my lowest of lows with some things all around in my life, and I was, and with some help of some mentors through the man-up group, you know, we used yeah, to attend, sure. and others, you know, it helped me, God sent a message to refocus my thought more on what he's wanting instead of what, what Jeremy, Jeremy wants. wants. Yeah. So, and that really did change. I've gotten a lot better at that over the years since then. Yeah, guys, it's so important that we get together. I mean, we, you know, of course, we have small groups that have meet on Tuesday last night. So we had the women kind of came upstairs in our new place and we had a little heater and we met around a campfire. But there's so much good that happens when guys and girls get together and just talk about life and share. And, uh, you know, I've always described sin as, as like a black snake out in the yard, like a black snake or something. You're like, when you see it out there, it's just a snake. It doesn't bother you because it's out and it's exposed. Mm -hmm. Where it has power over you is when you're in the wood pile or something, and there it is, mm -hmm. and it frightens you because, you know, it's, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what sin is. When you talk about it, you know, or, hey, Jeremy, I'm struggling with this, you know, let's talk about it. Like, it has no power over you anymore. It's kind of a neat, mm -hmm. and that's why I would encourage you guys, just be, be with somebody, be in a group with somebody. So, how about you? Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of lessons. Um, still a work in progress. I think we uh, all are. I hope. A hmm. um, couple of big ones that stand out are, you know, I, I used to, and I think I've talked about this before, is um, I grew up in Christian school and going to church and all that, and I used to joke, well, I know the shortest verse in the Bible, you know, John eleven thirty five, Jesus wept, and it was always a joke, well, I know a Bible verse, and uh, as I got older, and, and I don't remember exactly when I started digging into it, but learning what that verse means, you know, why Jesus actually wept. Mm -hmm. That's something that, you know, I, I grew up probably similar to you guys where men don't cry, men don't show emotion, men are men. And, uh, you know, to see Jesus crying because he loves someone, yeah. that's that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and something else I've talked about, I know, is, is um, when I got a glimpse of, of how much God actually loved me. You know, the first time that, like, I had that picture was um, our youngest, Dylan Marie, was a week, maybe too old. And, and I could literally hold her right here in my arm. Mm -hmm. um, she was that small. And uh, we were at a worship night in our church in New York. This was, like, a week or two before we actually left New York and came to Florida. And, um, I don't even remember the song we were singing, but we were singing about how, how much God loves us. And here I am holding my little newborn baby and... Just think, wow, if I love her that much, and I am such an imperfect person, I am such going to be a failure as a dad in many, so many ways, um, how much more, and I, and I love her so much, I would do anything for her, any of my kids, and how much more does God love me? Yeah. It's hard to imagine, and kids do that to you. Kids mm -hmm. yeah. are one of those things that definitely help grow you up definitely. and change how you view things. I think oftentimes that's one of God's way of softening a man's heart. Um, for sure, but and I told you guys my Job story before. 
about how I was wrestling with God about something about past and stuff in my life, and God says it was during prayer time. And you know, God doesn't He didn't He didn't audibly come and sit in front of me with a burning bush or something. But you know, sometimes God just says He just drives you to Scripture. And I remember I was in prayer with God, and you know, you know, we have things we've done in the past you struggle yeah. with, and uh, He kept saying, "Go to Job, read my read my book of Job," and I'm like. I've read the book of Job. I've had I've been to Sunday school, you know. I've, I've done Job a million times. I know the Job story inside and out. And he's like, like I'm smarter than God, you know. He said, like, "Son, go read the book of Job." And so, we we know the big picture story about Job, right? Where he, uh, God says, "Go to preach to the great city of Nineveh." And Job gets scared. He runs the other way. I don't want to go. And he gets on a boat, and the boat has a storm, right? And they throw him overboard eventually. And then a whale, you know, a great fish swallows him up. And for three days, and he repents and. You're saying Job and talking about Jonah. I'm sorry, Jonah. Yes, Jonah. <laughs> Book of Jonah. <laughs> Book of Jonah, sorry. And so he's, he repents inside this belly of this great fish, and it spits him out, and then he goes and he preaches to Nineveh, and then they all repent and turn, and like the chapter 4, he's mad because they did. It's like, why do you think God would send you there? Anyway, so he sits under a bush and sulks. But what you miss in that great first chapter is it says he gets on this boat. He's in the wrong direction and the opposite way, defying God. He gets on this boat. And it says when he gets on the boat, all these guys had their own gods. They're worshiping these idols and all this stuff. And then through this great storm process, they pitch Jonah over. The fish swallows, well, I mean, before the fish swallows, the storm calms down right away. Mm -hmm. And it says that right then, they all started worshiping the one true God. Mm -hmm. So jo Jonah, not Job, Jonah's misstep, <laughs> God still used to bring people closer to him. And through that, what God was telling me is you have misstepped in your past, but I'm still going to use it for my glory. I'm still going to use you in your missteps for, for great things. And um, I, I probably wouldn't be here today if I didn't listen to God and go read that story of Jonah. So that, that is one of those times where, where God just intimately changed my thought process and, and who I am is different because of that. So, so in this Sermon on the Series, so far, we're still in the first chapter, but we're closing in on the end of chapter five. But have you, has any of this we've we've talked about? I know you guys have read it as we're going, but has has any your view of God changed at all? Um, you know, specifically His laws or what He has in store for you? Um, anything so far? Reach out. One of the topics we've covered. I think um, for me, the thing that stands out most it's, it's kind of challenged my thinking is when we did the Beatitudes, um, you know, the, the idea, specifically the one that's popping in my head right now, is, is the one of righteousness. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's not just not doing wrong, not just staying away from the bad things. It's actually striving to do the right things. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are so many of those, and, and I preached through a couple of those, um, but it, it's, it's not just avoiding sin or avoiding whatever it's actually striving to be like God and, and striving to follow his laws because um, you can still like I can not eat pie but doesn't mean I'm going to lose weight and get healthier yeah. right I mean I, I can very not very easily but I can abstain from pie and candy and all the things that I like doesn't mean I'm going to lose weight and, and get healthy. I have to actually get up and, and work out to, to become healthier. Yes, that helps. That's a good start of putting the fork down and, and eating less and, and all the, the right food things. That, that's a good start. But I'm not striving after that exercise. I'm not striving after those things mm -hmm. to become healthy. So that, that is really when I, when I you, you touched on a couple and when I preached through some mm -hmm. of those. That really jumped out as well. It's, okay, I have to go after those things. So I'm hearing you say it's not good enough just to obey a law or do or don't do something. You actually have to have a desire to mm -hmm. do it because you yeah. know it's good for you. The, yeah. the heart issue is what you're talking about when you're yeah. hungering and thirsting for that righteousness. It's yeah. like, give me it. Where is it at, God? Where's the where's the laws and stuff that I know are good for me? Yeah. If I'm hearing you right. So. Yeah. About you? Well, I I have to say the past couple of weeks when you were talking about how. And you visual, you made a visualization of it. Well, no sin is greater than the other with the lineup mm. of people. You know, I like the way you did that was it just stuck out to me because, you know, no matter where you are on that line, you're on the same line. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so it was just 
it, I enjoyed that, and I saw even people's reactions in the crowd, you know, under the tent, and they just, some people were shocked and surprised to hear that because, you know, some of us are quick to judge sure. and throw others, you know, you without sin cast a first stone type yeah. of thing, you know. So we just got to yeah. be careful. But so once you're a lawbreaker, you're a lawbreaker. He didn't say which one was the worse or the better. Exactly. <laughs> the good one to break or the bad one to break. So, yeah. Um, I think for me, studying this is really, you know, as I'm learning to preach, learning how to do this, I can look at how Jesus set this stage up. He started with the Beatitudes, mm -hmm. this great sermon, right? He starts with getting our attitudes in a spot where we're right, you know. And he, and he talks about persecution, okay? When you guys make this decision, get your attitudes right, you're going to get persecution. And then he talks about who they are, the salt and the light of the world. You know, and you guys are going to be my examples. And, you know, he's kind of setting the stage. And so you can have a picture of you were saying this to the people on Sunday. You know, you guys are going to be the guys. Mm -hmm. Get your attitudes right. And he said, first of all, let me just get something clear. I'm going to say some, some things you are not used to hearing. But I've not come to abolish the law. It's going to st The law is the law. But let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of challenges this thing on murder and adultery we talked about two weeks ago. And we had our breakfast last week. I'll talk about that in a minute. But, and then this week we're going to talk about uh, vows and divorce and, and you know, anger and revenge and stuff. And he, what he's trying to do is, you know, you guys are, you, you're, like you were saying, you're, you're doing the laws and things, but your heart's in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And what God really wants is a relationship with you. He doesn't want you to do things because he says to do them. He knows what's good for us. And so I can... Jesus paints a beautiful picture here uh, as he's going along, but he set the stage right, you know, early on. To, so it's just been a neat, eye-opening experience to how great of a uh, message this actually had to be if you were sitting there in the crowd or one of the disciples, you know. You heard it said that if you look at a woman lustfully, you've already committed adultery. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, but I thought I was a good guy because I never, you know, I, I, I never killed anybody, so I'm a good guy. But Jesus says, don't even be angry in a spot to where you have hatred in your heart. It's like... Uh oh, yeah. Maybe I have broken a lot of those ten commandments. I thought I was really good at. You mm -hmm. know? So, yeah. Anyway, whether you like the holiday season or not, oh boy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what message do you hope that our church, Christ Family Christian Church, and its visitors and guests, what do you hope that they leave this place at the end of December, going into January, whatever? What would you like to have us be better at, or what? Where do you want us to be in a month? Little son, you see that? <laughs> yeah, you're you're washed up. You're, you're um, the spotlight. <laughs> I'm gonna talk from here. A little lean on. <laughs> it's still a work in progress, folks. I apologize. We we'll get it figured out. <laughs> Last week the sun wasn't an issue. It went away. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, whether you like the holidays or not, I wonder why you threw that statement. <laughs> One of us doesn't like the holidays a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm not a big commercial holiday person. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, I think the the hard part of, about this is it is such a big deal for so many people, um, you know, and, and good and bad. You know, there's so many people at this time of year they're they're dealing with stuff. You know, I mean, and, and I'm I'm no different. You know, there, there's there's family stuff, there's history, there's whatever. And that's okay. You know, that's something that I'm, I'm learning is it's okay to, to deal with stuff. You have to deal with it. You know, you can't, for, for so many years, I was what many people would call a stuffer. I stuff my feelings, you know, and still don't express them well. Still don't talk about them. I don't like them. I know they're there. I acknowledge them. I just don't. So you talk about your kids and it's like a big crybaby. Well, yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. teddy bear. Um, but we're, we're all coming from a place of need, whether we have physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs, um, you know, and, and you don't go to the doctor when you're healthy, you go to the doctor because you're sick, right? And, and not, it's not us, we're not the, the people that can fix that, you know, we're, hopefully we can help guide you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's something that, that I think we need to focus on is is taking people as they are, um, you know, and help them see Jesus, you know. And again, it's not me. I please don't look at me. I'm a <laughs> terrible example of that. Um, trying to be better. Trying trying to let God Jesus light shine through me. But 
It's not always easy. But it, there's just a lot of a lot of hurt and a lot of whatever. And uh, I think being able to point people to Jesus and say, hey, he's the one you need to look at. He's the one that you need to follow and, and be like. Mm-hmm. To kind of piggyback off that a little bit, uh, I'd say, you know, and I was thinking about this, it's the, the message of hope that there is a way out. You know, you don't have to deal with it alone. You know, like he said, you know, you don't go to the doctor unless you're sick. You know, you come to church to help your spiritual sickness Mm -hmm. and get, you know, and that gives you hope. And, you know, and hopefully they'll see that they have people that care and love them. And because a lot of people are dealing with, you know, loneliness, whatever, especially during the holidays. So, you know, that there are people out there that are willing to be there with them, you know go through it with life with them. Yeah. Well, you know, we always say that Jesus is the reason for the season. And that's a really cool saying to say, if you're just saying it, but yeah. do you really believe it? And one of the things that I like about this, the, the holiday season is it does bring people together, uh, mm-hmm. families, extended families. And, and that being said, there's a lot of people, uh, you know, whether, whether through adoption or whatever the case may be, that are struggling with the fact that family isn't a great name it's not a great word in their vocabulary and there's the holidays bring about a lot of tough memories sometimes if lost of loved ones and that and to me I, I think if I would want to have one thing we all knew and got out of this is that we're all orphans because of sin we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and because of his loving nature because of Jesus which is who we celebrate he is the reason for the season God allows us to be adopted back into a family. Mm-hmm. And so whether your family uh, dining room table is going to have a lot of cool, long memories, a lot of traditions and family there or not, there's a, there's a big one waiting for us mm-hmm. because of Jesus. And, and God's got a special chair there for you. And he's called us his own again because of this season. So we say that Jesus is the reason for the season, mm-hmm. but do we know what that actually means? Do, do we know that, like... We get to celebrate in heaven every day one day because of that mm-hmm. that birth of Jesus. His decision to go into his own creation to save us. I mean, Easter's my favorite because that's the deal. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we're Christians because of Easter, but without Christmas, there is no Easter. So, mm-hmm. anyway, that's my thoughts. I hope you guys, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of this series. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, like, hang out here in the light for a while and put my sunglasses on. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Pat. It's a work in progress. We'll figure it out one of these days. Hang on. There he goes. Oh, that's all you need, right. dude. Now, now they can see your eyes there at you least. Go. That's right. <laughs> I can see them. Now you can see. <laughs> now you can see. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so we're we're still here. We're still under the tent. It uh, Hopefully it warms up a little bit more than it, it is today on Sunday. But yes. Whatever. It's We're under a tent. We expect to be dealing with the elements. But uh, Yeah, we're here at 1030. Right here in our building, our building is still under construction, will be for, for some time. But please don't let that stop you from coming out. Um, we we got a lot going on. We have another breakfast coming up in January. January. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's but, what I wanted to talk about, unless you're going to keep talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, if you missed, if you watch us online for church, obviously you know we had a breakfast on Sunday. And we have made a decision that every fifth Sunday of the month we're going to do that. That is mostly for the idea of inviting people to breakfast. A lot, a lot of times you say, hey, can you come to church with me on Sunday? It's kind of like, uh, I got this weird idea of church, and it's sometimes, uh, whatever the reason, whatever the negative thoughts about church are, we're trying to break that barrier down. Mm-hmm. So you can just come have breakfast with us, and we uh, just give our volunteer, uh, some of them, some of the volunteers <laughs> get a break. We don't, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like the band and stuff. But, uh, but the, the purpose of that is we sit at tables, um, socially distance as best we can and just talk meet somebody new and just get to know each other because mm-hmm. it's hard to do on Sundays you know yep. sometimes with all the stuff going on and it's just hard to get to know each other but that is so you can invite your neighbors to breakfast and not mm-hmm. church and so yes in January we're gonna do that again man I hope y'all can come we, you're invited you, from us three you are personally yes. invited to breakfast at the last Sunday in January yep you yep. can find that on Facebook all the information mm-hmm. uh, we'll make a big deal about that as it gets yep. closer um, Pat, you got a couple more birthday wishes. Miss Patty said happy birthday. Becky, Miss Becky said happy birthday. My wife said it's going to be 73 tomorrow. 
which is awesome. Let's talk in a little better language. <laughs> it's supposed to cool Thank down again this weekend, though. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so ten thirty Sunday morning. So again, we're still live streaming our services on Facebook. Uh, for those of you that are out of the area, we know we cover like three or four states now, which is pretty cool. I know yeah. I have family in New York that watches. You have family in Kansas yeah. and Wyoming that watch. Um, and isn't there another one out there? I don't know. Anyway, so we will still we'll continue. Bora Bora. As long as <laughs> no, I don't mean that. Bora Bora. Te- I don't know. But if you're watching from there, I'd like to be part of the family. Come as, <laughs> as long as technology is a thing, we will continue to live stream the best we are able. And again, it's it's weird under the tent. It's temporary under the tent, but we still trying to make it the best we can. So if you have suggestions or you see something, and we're not looking at the camera or whatever, uh, please go That's ahead and put the comments yes. in. Post comments or, or send us an email. We want to get better. We want to um, help you guys have the best experience online as possible. And of course, live, we are here at 1030s underneath the tent behind the building. Um, bring a jacket, bring a blanket, bring a fan. We never really know what to lawn expect. Chair, yeah, sunglasses. Bring a lawn chair, lawn chair, whatever. Yeah. Um, we, we just got a few more chairs. We got a few more tents. We to, have enough chairs. To, to spread out. Uh, we still got plenty of activities for the kids, even though we don't have kids services yet. We probably won't have kids services while we're under the tent, but we, we have some volunteers that work very hard at putting the kids packets together so the little ones have something to do and they have a snack. And uh, We have coffee, I hope, this week. It's going to be a little chillier, so hopefully we'll coffee. If coffee, not, there's a little water, whatever. I don't know. I'm just making we things up at this point. Um, other than that, yeah, check out the website, any information. That you need to know uh, our contact information is also on our website cfcc.church uh, you can reach us there all our old sermons are there they're on youtube uh, they're on instagram everything except youtube cfcc.church youtube is still there hanging on but uh i think that's that's all we got um yeah christmas is coming up we want to talk about that or is that a next week thing we'll talk about it next week all right yeah. So stay tuned for a special-ish announcement about Christmas. We do have Christmas Eve services, if that's what you're that's talking about. That's what I meant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have two Christmas Eve services. As of right now, they're 4 o'clock and 5.30. If we do move them, it'll only be 3.30 and 5. So right in that neighborhood, we'll have the announcements for sure. But uh, somewhere, we'll have two services and those two type of um, and hours. And we'll have snacks and something special for you on, on that. And a couple we of have football a, speakers and... Yeah. Know, a t- couple. Of, we have our, our decorating crew. I guess it's coming this Saturday to mm-hmm. decorate our tent and make it very Christmassy. Yeah, which April's I, coming. Right? I'm being dragged into it too. Oh yeah. Well, you're, 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 your, wife and my wife, there, yeah. your wife and my wife said, "Yeah, you're coming too." Okay. If it was me, I'd get a Charlie Brown tree there. and pop it on the stage and plug it in, and there you go. That's decorating for Christmas, as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing wrong with that tree. Which is why I don't decorate <laughs> for Christmas. I am, admittedly, the Grinch and Scrooge all wrapped into one. But it's all about I told Jesus. You he was the we still love you, Dale. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, anyway, um, yeah, that's about all I got. Pat, you want to close the prayer? I do, I do. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. And uh, birthdays or not, God, I know you're in charge of them all. And cold days or warm days, you're still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so we just ask that you uh, guide over us this this holiday season. If you don't come back this month, God, I ask that you will work through us and with us to uh, make your name mighty again in this place. And that uh, at the end of this season, uh, that, that our requests, the things we hope for our church would be uh, made true, that uh, they may know that it is because of your son, because of your sacrifice, your decision to come into your own creation and, and to live a life, not, not even as a wealthy person, God, just as a, a poor man that walked the earth with no possessions and just loved people. And if he could teach us to do that the same, we would just be so honored to be called your hands and feet and your helpers in making disciples our job we pray all this in christ's name amen all right guys